Hello, this is Meme Analysis, and today we're going to be taking a very basic but uh, an interesting dive into the world of sex magic. We're going to take a look at Aleister Crowley's ideas on sex magic, Peter Carroll's, and William S. Burroughs. So if you'd like to see some of these interesting accounts, stay with us. So I'm going to be reading from Crowley's book, The Book of Lies, which is a series of Kabbalistic and magical poems that are meant to deliver his philosophy through art. Uh, I'm going to be reading from a few of them, but this one particularly is the eighth, uh, and it is steeped horsehair. Mind is a disease of semen. All that a man is or may be is hidden therein. Bodily functions are parts of the machine, silent unless in dis-ease. But mind never at ease creaketh I. This I persisteth not, posteth not through generations, changeth momently, finally is dead. Therefore is man only himself when lost to himself in the charioting. Now I think that this has a very uh, important idea, and I'll just give a little bit of the commentary before I go into it, which is that the whole collective consciousness, that which is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, is hidden therein. Therefore, except in the case of an adept, man only rises to a glimmer of the universal consciousness, while in the orgasm, the mind is blotted out. Now, that's super important, and I think that we can look at it through Reich, very importantly, which is that in the moment of orgasm, we fully express and fully experience all that makes us, all that is our being, which is that organotic energy. Crowley is, and as I've talked about in the previous video about love, he's talking about the same exact type of energy, this libidinal force, which acts as the engine of all magic and of human consciousness. So I'm going to go on to the next one, which illustrates that idea even further. Now, this is the 15th lie, the gun barrel. Mighty and erect is this will of mine, this pyramid of fire whose summit is lost in heaven. Upon it have I burned the corpse of my desires. Mighty and erect is the phallus of my will. The seed thereof is that which I have borne within me from eternity and it is lost within the body of Our Lady of the Stars. I am not I. I am but a hollow tube to bring down fire from heaven. Mighty and marvelous is this weakness, this heaven which draweth me into her womb, this dome which hideth, which absorbeth me. This is the night wherein I am lost, the love through which I am no longer I. So we get the image of the phallus merely as a tool of the collective heavenly fire. This is super important because Reich views sexual experience as cosmic superimposition, as literally a collective expression making itself known between two individuals. So the idea that when a man orgasms, when his penis is utilized, it is literally the embodiment of a heavenly fire. Um, and this is really the big point that Crowley is making that is deeply contrasted with sexuality and the Golden Dawn and previous magical orders, which are much more moralistic. Crowley is saying that sexuality is an expression of the divine, much in the way that Reich is making this clear, that God is love, is psychic energy, which of course we already talked about. We're treading over a lot of the same material. So it is important actually, if you want to get a really full picture of the stuff that we're reading in the meme analysis series, that um, if you're interested, say, in Crowley, you know, there's the few other videos we've done so far which deal with him expressly. So it's important to kind of establish the structure of the idea so that when I say love or when I talk about sexuality, you know that there's a whole lot more that's being fed into those words than is purely superficial. We got that. And now on to a bit about how to have magical sex and about the need to overcome those superficial ideas about sex magic to be an effective sex magician. I'm going to be reading from Peter Carroll's Liber Null and Psychonaut, which is a really great collection and perhaps the fundamental text 
that any chaos magician is going to be using because it really teaches all of those methods in a very concise and practical way. Uh, I know that it's been extremely important to me, so here's a little bit on sexuality. Sexual excitation can be obtained by any preferred method. In all cases, there has to be a transference from the lust required to ignite the sexuality to the matter of the magical working at hand. The nature of a sexual working lends itself readily to the creation of independent orders of being, evocation. Also in works of invocation, where the magician seeks union with some principle or being, the process can be mirrored on the physical plane. One's partner is visualized as an incarnation of the desired idea, or God. Prolonged excitement through caressa, inhibition of orgasm, or repeated orgasmic collapse can lead to trance states useful for divination. It may be necessary to regain one's original sexuality from the mass of fantasy and association into which it mostly sinks. This is achieved by judicious use of abstention and by arousing lust without any form of mental prop or fantasy. This exercise is therapeutic. Be ye ever virgin unto Kia. Now that's super important. And does it not echo Reich's idea about the need for orgastic potency as opposed to um, neurotic masturbation and neurotic sexuality? That to be an effective sex magician, you need to know consciously what you do. You have to be free of mental phantasms, as Crowley talks about in book four. You must clear your sexuality and purify it to make it powerful again. I mean, this is something we've talked about a lot before in the Ahegao video, in the Ideal Girlfriend video, but that sexuality, when influenced by the internet and by memes, pornographic memes, it gets dragged down, it gets scarred and marked. One begins to think of sexuality in a very strange, perverse way, and most importantly, in a way that is not real. It is not uh, correlate to anything material. And so what he's talking about, what Carol's talking about, is the need to make sexuality occur without any kind of pornographic influence. It needs to be purely from within um, to embody that kind of initial drive rather than anything that's diverted, like we've talked about with Reich and how diverted libido produces uh, bizarre sexuality. But we get to this kind of strange... Um, contradiction, which is that Reich thinks that the occult and mystical phenomena occur due to a redirection of libido inwards, and that that redirected libido is exteriorized as phenomena. But Carroll says, and Crowley says, and I think that it does make sense, that through the expression of libido in a controlled manner, you are able to direct it toward psychic experience. You can kind of make, whether conscious or unconscious, a willed decision to direct libido into mystical experiences, rather than kind of a person who is at the psychotic whim of these autonomous complexes. That is the real difference between, say, a black brother who knows not what he does and a white brother who is aware of what they're doing mastering their own drive. I kind of wanted to finish it with something that's a little bit farther from traditional sex magic and into something a bit stranger, which is William S. Burroughs' ideas that are utilizing Reich, and again, making it perverse and strange, which is the most exciting thing to do, isn't it? So I'm going to flip open one of my favorites and one that we've read before, William S. Burroughs' revised Boy Scout Manual. I have suggested that virus can be created to order in the laboratory from very small units of sound and image. Such a preparation is not in itself biologically active, but it could activate or even create virus in susceptible subjects. A carefully prepared jaundice tape could activate or create the jaundice virus in liver cells, especially in cases where the liver is already damaged. The operator is in effect, directing a virus revolution of the cells. Since DOR seems to attack those exposed to it at the weakest point, 
Release of this force could coincide with virus attack. Reactive mind phrases could serve the same purpose of rendering subjects more susceptible to virus attack. I talked about this in the video about mimetic hazards, but we're getting such a very clear look at the ability to create a violent, harmful meme, a meme that has physical repercussions, and doing so using sexuality. DOR is not merely a asexed drive. Aggression is not just not sexual. DOR is the ultimate perversity. And that, I think, is why, if you read Nick Land's Thirst for Annihilation, his view of Thanatos is word for word at points exactly the same as Wilhelm Reich's description of deadly orgone. We are getting a look at this fantastic energetic philosophy being espoused by Nick Land, but I'm not exactly sure why he doesn't name Reich, but perhaps it is because Reich is so widely discredited as our favorite cigar smoking fellow, but that Reich's ideas are so impenetrable to the average mind because he is so heavily moral in his writing. I read Reich much the same way that I read Crowley, which is two people who are widely used by kind of crazy people, who are used by people who, you know, attempt to make world systems and fantasies using their ideas. You have the kind of Oregon pyramids, which I really don't believe in at all. You have the people who use Crowley as the very image of the devil. A lot of conspiracy theorists are obsessed with the occult, but they don't understand it at all. When we look at L. Ron Hubbard and we look at William S. Burroughs, we're not just looking at nobodies. When you look at L. Ron Hubbard, you see the man responsible for the most effective domestic espionage in U.S. history. You're looking at the man responsible for the fastest growing religion of the 20th century. He used Aleister Crowley's ideas. And, of course, Burroughs is using his ideas and influencing Deleuze. Deleuze influencing land. And land, of course, we're getting Silicon Valley talking about accelerationism right out in the open. I think that we're reaching a point where mimetic philosophies are widely unconsciously accepted. Which, in some cases, is why, if you watch my videos, it might seem like I'm talking about things that, oh, that was just common sense. Uh, it's almost like these ideas are not that big or not that, ob you know, or not that um, deep. But I do think that you need to read the stuff that's affecting people. Read the things that, say, Alexander Dugan is using to influence Russian and geopolitics generally. People are using Aleister Crowley, using Nick Land, using William S. Burroughs. Magic is not just the realm of the schizophrenic or the psychotic. It's not just delusion. It is, in fact, practical. And sexual magic is perhaps the most practical of all. Everybody has heard the phrase, sex sells. Why? Give a read to these books. Find out what you know about sexuality and even further, how are memes sexual? And as always, remember, memes matter. Mm -hmm.